gaskets. If you have ever worked on an engine, a transmission, or an engine and transmission, then you have probably encountered gaskets. Not exclusive to engines and other driveline components, they can also be found on body components too, helping to get rid of rattles. For a lot of vehicles, especially ones that were mass manufactured and really popular among enthusiasts, you can pretty much get whatever gasket you could possibly need either at Rock Auto or another popular parts supplier. But not every car or motorcycle owner is that lucky. I just finished restoring the luggage rack for my 1985 Pontiac Fiero that I'm sure a lot of you guys know very well, and I remembered that I only have two good gaskets for it. The rest crumbled away during disassembly. Needing replacements and having no companies that manufacture them, I was prompted to do something about it myself and, in turn, make this video. So stick around and hold tight because today I'm going to try out three different methods on how to digitally recreate gaskets in order to make high quality replacements. Saturday. The first method is pretty straightforward. Since this gasket is pretty much a rectangle with a few holes here and there, it's easy enough to just measure it and manually draw it. So okay, that's great, but what program should be used? Well, I'm sure you could use a vector drawing program like Adobe Illustrator, but I have a lot of experience in CAD software like SolidWorks and Fusion 360, plus they have lots of great tools for this kind of stuff. Fusion 360 is completely free for anyone to use, so I'll be using that. Now it's just a matter of measuring everything out and copying it to the computer. But make sure to set your calipers to millimeters though, we are not cavemen here. So for something as simple as this, it only took a few minutes to get everything drawn up. But hey, there you go, a digital recreation of the gasket. But we're not done yet. If you didn't already make this in a vector program, it's time to bring it over to one of those. So I'll be using Adobe Illustrator like I mentioned before. And to do that, I brought the CAD file to a new technical drawing document inside Fusion 360, and I made sure to set up the sheet size big enough to contain the entire thing in full 1 to 1 scale. And from there, I exported it as a DWG file. Though there's an issue. Autodesk Fusion 360 exports it as the latest version of the DWG file format, and that format is not compatible with the Adobe Suite. So you have to get another Autodesk program called TrueView, which can convert the DWG file into an earlier version that is readable by Illustrator. Though in SolidWorks, you can choose which version of the DWG format you want to export it as. So... Get your sh** together, Autodesk. So now with the converted DWG file ready, I made a new artboard inside Illustrator with the same dimensions as the technical drawing sheet. And then I imported the DWG file and set it to match the size of the artboard. That way there's no scaling issues. Then just hide or delete the extra layers, and hey, there you go. You now have a vector graphic of your gasket. From here, you can print it out on paper or at least part of it in my case since the whole thing was so long, and then test to see if everything matches up. Then you can make adjustments if things are a little bit off, but if it looks good, you're ready to go. There are the two other styles of gaskets for my luggage rack, but they're all about 90% the same as the first one I did, so I only had to change a few things to get them to match. But nice, I now have exact recreations of these. So we have the vector files, but what now? Well, now we can send them off to get them laser cut or vinyl cut somewhere. Justin and Amy over at the YouTube channel The Good of the Land made a video showing what that process is like using a vinyl cutter. However, they use the proprietary software for the machine. In my experience, I had to have the files in Illustrator in order to get them cut out. So that's why I brought them over to that program from Fusion 360. So if you don't have a vinyl cutter or a laser cutter, like most people don't, but are a student at a university, then you probably have access to something like that on campus. And if not, there's probably a makerspace in your area that has one available. And if not a makerspace, there's a good chance that there'll be a local Craigslist or Facebook marketplace listing of someone offering laser or vinyl cutting services. But the bottom line is that you can get them made exactly 
locally and for very cheap. So that's awesome. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, but what if your gasket isn't a rectangle with six holes and is something a little bit more complicated? I did mention earlier that I wanted to try out three methods of digital recreation, so here is method number two. When I was tearing down the Fiero's driveline and resealing the transmission, I had to remove the shift select mechanism. I wanted to replace that gasket, but Isuzu MT2 transmissions aren't really hot commodities. The paper gasket looked fine though, so I kept using it. But thinking ahead, I made sure to scan it to the computer. So method number two is something I think that most of us have done at some point in life, and that's tracing. It's really as simple as it sounds. You just load in the scanned image and go to town. Bring it over to Illustrator just like from before, and that's it. It's a little tedious, but hey, you were left with an exact copy of your gasket with no measuring of anything whatsoever. Psst, hey. Do you want to know a secret? Method number two sucks ass. The quickest, easiest, and best way to do this is method number three. Let me show you. So, you have your gasket that you want to copy. I happen to have a Kawasaki GPZ 1000 RX stator cover gasket lying around, so let's scan that. Once it's saved, bring it into Photoshop. As long as the DPI it was scanned at matches up with the pixels per inch inside Photoshop, it should be a 1 to 1 scale. Go ahead and crop it down and get rid of any subliminal messages. This looks good, but it is still just an image with pixels. The more you zoom in, the worse it looks. It needs to be a vector. So save that Photoshop file and then open it in Illustrator. And this is where the magic happens. Go to Object, Image Trace make and expand. The image is now a vector. Though the process did make all the negative space of the image into white objects too, so just select everything but the gasket shape and delete it all. Switch it so there's no fill and instead just the outline, and there you go. A perfect copy, vectorized, ready to be manufactured. No measuring, no tracing, and the entire thing was done in literal seconds. It really can't get much better than that. Or can it? Let's imagine for a second that this Honda CB450 points cover is apart from a very rare vehicle. And to get a gasket for it, you could honestly get away with scanning the part itself. Once you remove everything except the mating surface in Photoshop and clean up some jagged edges, just vectorize it in Illustrator like from before, and there you go. Another perfect digital gasket ready to be manufactured. And hell, you could even get away with taking an image of a gasket online and using that. Though the only thing to be wary of with this is making sure that it's the right scale. But yeah, it really is this easy. So now you guys know how to recreate any gasket you could possibly ever need. And like I said, now it's only a matter of getting some gasket material and getting them laser cut, vinyl cut, or something similar. But I would be remiss to not address the question of why? Well, if you are as anal retentive as I am, hand cut gaskets would drive you insane. However, the biggest reason is sharing. Car and motorcycle communities are so great because they are just that. Communities. People are there to help one another. So by you doing all this digital work, which really isn't that much work, you have the ability to help other people experiencing the same lack of gasket issue as you. Now whether that's sharing the vector files to people directly or possibly you having a side hustle where you make copies and sell to people, you can really make a difference. Even if it's only one person you help, it's worth it. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video and can actually get a use out of it. I know that the Adobe Suite isn't free, but there are plenty of free softwares out there that do the exact same thing. GIMP is a free alternative to Photoshop and Inkscape for Illustrator. But whatever you use, Go have fun and go make some gaskets. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.